the Lord on today. The song simply says, with my hands lifted up and my mouth filled with praise, with a heart of thanksgiving, I will bless thee, O Lord, with my hands lifted up, with my hands
see what the end's gonna be. If you really mean that, then I want you to put those hands together. Let's go back from the top, Adrian. Let's take it from the top. Come on, put those hands together. Here we go. singing tonight. We, we got our very own here. We may as well just have church. Can we just have a good time tonight? Give me one more. Whatever you want to choose. Come on, let's just have church. Put your hands together. Come on. Do it again. 
I can truly say, come on, like you mean, if you've been blessed, come on, I can truly say, I can truly say, oh, I can truly say, he brought me all the way, oh, I can truly say, that he brought me all the way, I can truly say, the Lord's been good to me, what about you, 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 I can truly say, yes, sir. oh, Relationships, unwise decisions. He brought you not some of the way, but the Lord has brought you all the way. And for that, you ought to just tell God, I thank you. Bless the name of our God. Hey, we want to give him glory and honor and praise tonight. If you're going to come to church, you may as well have it. Amen. Bless the name of our God. Anybody came to bless him tonight? You do know if you bring something, you'll get something. And I will bless the Lord at all times. And his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Give God one more rising round of applause. Come on, Reverend. Give us our scripture and our prayer. Bless his name. Holy Praise God. Hallelujah. Yes, Come on, somebody say hallelujah. 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 Praise God. Good night. Yes, sir. Mount Calvary. Yeah, 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 yeah. My father's children. Praise God. We're having a good time in the presence of the Lord. Mm. Praise God. Tonight, our night lesson will be taken from Psalms 150. Yeah. Praise God. Praise he the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Mm -hmm. yeah. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the low, with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the palsy and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with the string instrument and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbal. Final verse, let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise he, the Lord. Praise God, the word of God is already blessed. Let us pray. Eternal God and our Father, the creator of heaven and earth, the one which was and is and is to come, we give you praise, we give you honor, and we give you glory. Oh Lord, yes. We thank you for this privilege. Yes. We thank you for this opportunity mm -hmm. that you have given unto us of one more day. Knowing that we could have passed and gone by the cold and chilly hands of death. But tonight we are on a repentance ground. Yes, sir. Where we can make our wrongs right and our crooked parts straight. Amen. Father, we stop by here tonight to tell you thanks. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this thanks living service. Thank you, Lord, that we have come this far by faith and hard work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we tell you thanks. Yes. We thank you for this celebration. Yes. We thank you for your people who have gathered here tonight. Yes. I pray, Heavenly Father, that no one will leave the way they came tonight. I pray that every heart and mind may be in one accord tonight. I pray that you remove every heart of stony heart tonight. And I pray that every heart will have the heart of flesh tonight. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I pray that you will touch your people tonight, God. 
even those who are watching tonight, God, by the way of Facebook, God, and the, the church, mighty God, our website, I pray tonight, God, they will touch them. Because we know that there is no distance in prayer. Jehovah God, and I pray tonight, God, that when the words go forth tonight, God, I pray tonight, God, you will anoint your man's servant tonight. Yes, yes. I pray that the words will come forth, good God, with your anointing, with power, with clarity. I pray that you will give your people a receptive heart to your word tonight, God. I pray tonight, God, that his word go forth tonight, God. Souls will be saved tonight, God. Backsliders will return to you, Jehovah God. I pray you do something miraculous tonight, God. In this atmosphere tonight, God. Let this atmosphere be conducive to worship tonight, God. As we give your honor and praise tonight, God. I pray that when we come to the conclusion of this worship experience, God. We will say that it was good for us to be in your presence tonight, God. I pray also that everything will be done in decency and in order so that you will be glorified and the devil will be terrified in the mighty name of Jesus. God, hear and answer this prayer tonight, God. Bless the choir, God, so the musician, God, our pastor, and all of those who get here tonight as we give you thanks and as we give you praise and we call it done in Jesus' precious holy name. And all God's people who is in agreement tonight, say amen. amen. Oh, from the rising of the sun, from the everybody, from the rising of the sun, come on, help me. Oh, until the morning of the same. I dug it in the family tonight.
And the reality is, if he woke you up this morning, you could spend all night just thanking him for that. Am I right about it? So we're grateful that you've come with worship and praise on your mind. And we're grateful tonight to be able to say to all of you uh, that it's a blessing to be in the service one more time. Amen. Let me take care of a little house cleaning business because I'm excited. I'm, I'm on tiptoe expectations tonight when it comes to this word. Uh, so I just want to get on past this so we can be blessed by our preacher for tonight. Somebody say, I know that's right. First announcement is we want to say a special God bless you and thank you to all of those who were out on yesterday um, as we partnered with Inspiration of Hope uh, for the food distribution. It was a wonderful and blessed situation. We ought to just give God praise. I was glad to be a part of it, but I was starting to wonder, now when are these cars going to stop? But it was a wonderful um, act of kindness and obedience to the word of God uh, and we ought to be about that type of love and demonstrating uh, because that's what it's all about so a special thanks to all of you who put the time in and for those who didn't put the time in but you prayed for us that all would go well uh, and it was just a wonderful expression of love uh, and I think the community really appreciated it they responded well so to all of you who were part of that thank you sister Donna and her team that committed thank you and to all of the volunteers thank you and I'll say it again, I do believe that the Lord was well pleased. Amen. As always, we encourage you to be a part of our Monday morning with the Master. Time of prayer, praise, testimony. That's every Monday at 8.30. We come together to start our week off with giving God praise and encouraging the saints during that time of prayer and testimony. And then on Wednesdays is our time of Bible study, 8.30, Wednesday mornings. Uh, Trustee Brown is our facilitator, and we had a wonderful lesson on yesterday, I believe it was, uh, that we were blessed. Oh, was that? That was, to, that was this morning. This morning, we were blessed uh, with the lesson. Uh, I tell you, it was such a powerful moment. And, and if you just want to be blessed, uh, you ought to just join us in that time of study. I love the participation and the response, and Trustee Brown has a gift uh, for making folk feel comfortable and getting engaged. And so I think it's just a wonderful time for us to get together. I look forward to it and thank all of you who are sharing with us in that time of study. And normally we would have our review of the, of the Sunday school lesson on Wednesday evenings. But as you know, for this month, we're in our Thanksgiving celebration series. So we're here tonight. Now on next Wednesday, everybody say next Wednesday. We will not be here on Wednesday night. Correction. I will not be here on Wednesday night. You may come, but there'll be nobody here but you. We're going to meet next Wednesday at what time? 12 o'clock noon. That will be Thanksgiving Eve, 12 o'clock noon. Pastor Reverend Dr. Ronald Durham will uh, close us out. So we're looking for a wonderful time on next Wednesday at 12 noon. We will not have our Wednesday morning Bible study. That way you can go ahead and be prepared to come out and join us um, for that um, Thanksgiving Eve celebration service. So 12 o'clock noon next Wednesday, we will be here to conclude our Thanksgiving series. And thank all of you who've been faithful in coming out uh, each Wednesday night. I appreciate it, and it means a lot. Do ask for your prayers for the Simpson family, uh, Angela Simpson, Donna Brown. hope that those names ring a bell. Uh, their father passed, uh, and his service will take place this Saturday in St. Augustine at the Anastasia Baptist Church. And so we know a short notice, but we want to let all of you know that if nothing else, you can pray for the Simpson and uh, the Brown family in the passing of their father. Again, that service is 12 o'clock noon, Anastasia Baptist Church in St. Augustine, Florida. Amen. And again, um, we thank all of you for your presence. Do we have any guests tonight? Any guests tonight? We're all family. So if you're close enough to somebody, turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, how you doing? How you doing? Ask them, say, how the children? Amen. Hopefully the children are doing well. And my final announcement is uh, stay tuned, stay close to your phone. Um, we will be having an uh, uh, end of the year celebration. Uh, normally we get together around Christmas time with potlucks and just have a fellowship. But of course we can't do that in this season. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to have a first Friday drive-by fish fry. Did y'all catch that? A first Friday 
drive-by fish fry, all right? Um, so we would that you would do your part. That means you need to start calling to the office uh, and getting your name on the list for the first Friday drive-by fish fry. We will need a count. So you can begin to call and leave your name at the office so we can get a count. Just to say thank you for hanging out with us throughout this year and just to get a chance to let you know that we love you uh, and we thank God for all of you. So we pray that you would go ahead and get the word out. I'll announce it again Sunday so we can begin to get a count. Uh, for the first Friday, drive-by, fish fry. That is the first Friday in December. And we'll be doing a robocall. But I figure since you all were here tonight, I will let the cat out the bag and give you all first dibs on what's coming down the pipeline. See, it pays to come to church. Somebody say, I know that's right. Again, thank all of you for your faithfulness, and we pray God will continue to bless each and every one of you. Let us now prepare for our offering. The deacons, will you come? And we ask that as you give, give cheerfully, and give as the Lord has prospered and has blessed you. Um, just a quick shout out, we're still practicing social distancing, so wear your mask when you're out in public. Uh, it's not over yet, but we're turning the curve, but still be safe. We ask now that you would follow the specific instructions of the ushers. And let us all stand and praise God from whom all blessings flow. of our ushers. Eternal God and our Father, we thank you again, God, for being here. We thank you for this offering that has been collected from your children. We ask you tonight, God, that we will continue to bless your people as they give tonight. Remember those who have to give and those who didn't have to give. I pray that you will bless them also, that they will have the opportunity to give next time. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Come on, put your hand on it. Put your hand on it. If you're blessed. Say bless. Bless. Bless.
going to work in your favor. It's going to work in your Sir, we are blessed, and we're glad about it, amen, in the city and in the field. Thank you for your giving. Thank you for the spirit in which you gave. We know the Lord really does love a cheerful giver. And just a quick thank you, um, and thanks to God. Um, on last Sunday, we celebrated 24 years, uh, and I want you to know... You all are some kind of church. If I didn't already have when I joined this one. But um, thank you for all of those who served, in case you weren't here Sunday. Had a wonderful time. Dr. Covenant did a great job. Uh, and we had a chance to love on Brother Jose and Deacon Simpson. Amen. For their commitment and service over the years. And I just think you ought to give folk their flowers while they get live. I've heard how great so many people were after they were gone. They never got a chance to know that they were appreciated. So I thank all of you for helping us just say thank you in some small way for their contribution over the years to this congregation. And thank God for all of you. Amen. And the good news is the best is yet to come. It's my assignment now to introduce, if you will, our preacher for the evening. None other than this is going to sound funny. Pastor William B. Robinson III. <laughs> Pastor William B. Robinson III is a gifted orator, singer, and leader. Pastor William B. Robinson III has been ordained and anointed and commissioned by God to be a prophetic voice in this hour for all generations across denominational divides through the mandate and the mantle that rests upon his life. And by way of preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ, he has been graced to equip, empower, educate, and encourage the lives of God's people all over the world. Pastor Robinson is a product of the Solid Rock Deliverance Holiness Church, founded by the late Bishop John E. Shingles in Jacksonville, Florida. Here he preached his initial sermon at the age of 12, where God confirmed and cultivated his call to ministry. Upon the completion of his high school education through the Duval County Public School System, Pastor Robinson embarked upon a new educational journey at Bethune-Cookman University where he completed, amen, his undergraduate matriculation and obtained a Bachelor of Arts degree in religion philosophy with a concentration in Christian studies. During this new chapter in his life with the relocation to Daytona Beach, God continued to confirm his ministry and open doors for an international platform. As a result, for the age of 25, Pastor Robinson had ministered in five countries outside of the United States, sharing worship and the word of God. More than spiritually, Elder Robinson has also availed himself to civic engagement, most notably through his service as a democracy fellow. In this role, he served 
at Faith in Florida, a social and faith-driven organization partnered with the AME Church designed to register voters throughout the entire state of Florida. Most recently, Pastor Robinson served more than two years as a youth minister for the Mount Calvary Baptist Church of Palm Coast. He also served as a youth and young adult pastor at the Dayspring Baptist Church located in Jacksonville, Florida. In June of 2021, he was appointed lead pastor of the Everlasting Life Church of God in Eustis, Florida. In addition, Pastor Robinson has also achieved many other academic and ministry accolades. In December of 2014, he was awarded his Certificate of Ministry License and was later ordained elder in October of 2016. Again, he was licensed as a minister in the Church of God, Cleveland, Tennessee, and has also been certified through the Church of God Chaplaincy Commission as a community service chaplain. He also served as alma mater as president of the Hind Memorial Chapel Assistance and was inducted into two honor societies, Theta Alpha Kappa, National Honor Society of Religious and Theological Studies, and Sigma Alpha Pi, National Society of Leadership and Success. Likewise, he is a member of Alpha Phi Alpha Fraternity Incorporated and Alpha Nu Omega Christian Fraternity. Presently, Pastor Robinson is a graduate student at the Samuel D. Witt Proctor School of Theology at Virginia Union University, a ministry of son Bishop William A. Lee. Among all these accolades, Elder Robinson's motto is God first, family second. His greatest joy in life is being a natural son, a spiritual son, a brother to his siblings, and a mentor and role model for all those to look to him for guidance and advice. And he is, in fact, one who's been touched by God to proclaim his word. And with that being said, after the choir comes, the next voice you will hear will be that of our preacher for this evening, our very own Pastor William B. Robinson. Raise your right hand toward the preacher and repeat after me. Pastor Robinson. Pastor Robinson, preach the word. Put those hands together one more time. Come on, choir.
Come on, put those hands together and give God some praise tonight. If you know that all of the ground is sinking sand, come on, would you just put your hands together? Tell them there's nobody like them. Nobody, nowhere. Went up to the highest mountain, couldn't find nobody. Down to the lowest valley, couldn't find nobody. But at the name of Jesus, Every, every, every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess. My God, one more time, put those hands together and give God a great big round of applause on tonight. Hallelujah. You may be seated in the presence of our good and gracious God. I don't know about y'all, but I feel something in this place on tonight. I'm... My, my, my assignment is to preach, but this is the thanks living service. And somebody ought to be thankful for the fact that you're living on today. There's a whole lot of people who've come and gone, but for some reason or another, the Lord has allowed us one more time. Amen. Come on, put those hands together and give our God a great big hand praise. Mount Calvary, I am godly grateful and exceedingly excited to have this opportunity uh, to be here on tonight. Amen. I love the Lord. Anybody really love him on tonight? I mean, nobody has to push you or prime you, but it's just something about being in his presence that you can say, I love the Lord. Amen. Would you help me and celebrate, amen, my mentor, amen, my friend. I, I, I just love him so much, uh, the Reverend Edwin Coffey. Come on, let's give him a, a standing ovation. I love him. I appreciate him. And I am so, so grateful for him. I'm telling you, Reverend. Reverend Watson, especially since I'm pastoring now, I'm, I'm, I'm discovering, I'm moving, that, that people just don't have to be nice to you. Lord, I thought I was going to have a church right there. And so when they are, you ought to learn how to say thank you, amen. And 
And so in front of these great cloud of witnesses, Reverend Coffey, I thank you, I appreciate you, and I honor you for who you are and what you mean to my life. One more time, put your hands together for the man of God whom I love. Amen. And his amazing wife. Come on, give her a great big round of applause. The flower and the fragrance of the house. She keeps it smelling and looking good around Mount Calvary. And so we honor God for her. To Lottie, Dottie, everybody, Paul and all of y'all, to everybody in protocol I did not call. We thank God. It feels good to be home. Amen. I don't feel the need to perform. I don't feel the need to come up here and do or be something that I'm not. Because you all have loved on me in such a way that only Mount Calvary uh, could do. Give yourselves a great big round of applause. I love you and appreciate you to all of the reverends, to Reverend Fontaine Watson, uh, to Reverend P. We praise God for everybody. Uh, we love you to all of these deacons. Y'all, I don't know. Um, uh, I'm, I'm going to the text, but I don't know. But uh, uh, Deacon, uh, Deacon Kirk started something in the back. Amen. He started praying, and the first thing that he said was thank you, and something shook in me. Amen. 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 Uh, St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17. St. Luke's Gospel, uh, chapter 17. Y'all, I believe we're going to have church on tonight. And listen, I, I, I want to, I, I, I don't want to leave nobody behind, but but you do know that if you don't want to have it with me, I'll have it by myself. Amen. So I invite you all, amen, even in the scripture reading, to be a part of what God is going to do in our brief time together um, on this evening. St. Luke's Gospel 17. Amen. And I want to highlight for you here in beginning at verse 11. St. Luke chapter 17. Verse 11, and we're going to do the uh, uh, New King James, the NKJV version. St. Luke's Gospel, chapter 17, verse 11. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem and passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off. They lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go show yourselves to the priest. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned with a loud voice, glorified God, and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were they not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? Our concluding verse, and he said to him, Arise, go your way, your faith has made you will arise go your way your faith has made you well my friends with these few fleeting moments on this evening I want to tag this text with the title tell them thank you amen but somebody look at your neighbor and say neighbor when was the last time you told them thank you Amen. There is a Lincoln Coupe Silver. Uh, tag is ZB140. Your lights are on. Your lights are on. A Lincoln Coupe uh, Silver. Um, your lights are on. Sovereign Savior, Mighty Master, we thank you now for this moment. We thank you for this appointed time and moment that you've given us. God, I pray now that you will think with my mind and speak with my mouth. God, I pray that you, in this moment, would pierce, provoke, persuade the heart of some person so that they won't ask who was the preacher. Or somebody will cry out, I yield, I yield. What must I do? 
to know this Lord and this liberator whose name is Jesus the Christ. And God, as I always pray, I pray that there's no distractions in the clothes that I wear, but there's deliverance and the clarity in which I'm able to declare. Pray now that there's no distractions in the promptness of my speech, but there's deliverance in the power in which I'm able to preach. Pray now that you will exempt us and eliminate us from showmanship. But allow your gospel to flow freely from my lips. Hide me behind the cross. Satan may be horrified. Your people may be edified and more so you glorified. We sign, seal, and deliver this prayer in the strong, sweet, sovereign, saving, and satisfying name of our Savior. It is in the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. One more time, when somebody shout, tell them thank you. Over the last year and a half, Mount Calvary, th there has been so much that has transpired and taken place in our world and our nation. But in spite of all that has occurred, all that has happened, all that has taken place, I'm just believe I'm just crazy enough to believe that God is still worthy of our praise. I I I I know that that we we're going on two years working uh, on a global pandemic. I know some of us in this place, and I am sensitive to the fact that many of us may have lost some things along the way. But I'm still crazy enough to believe that in spite of what we've endured, in spite of what's happened, in spite of how dark, desolate, and destitute it's looked over these last couple of months, God is still worthy to be praised. I, I, I know that tonight you came to this thanks living service looking for something profound, something big that was going to blow your mind. But God's word for somebody on tonight is that, William, I want to tell you, I want you to let somebody know that no matter what their situation looks like, no matter what you're going through, no matter how hard it is, no matter how big it may seem, that I'm still worthy of praise, glory, and honor. And I like it because, because, Reverend Coffee, it is the place in our life that when we mature enough to be so grateful, here it is, don't miss this, for the isness of God and not necessarily the business of God. I like it, beloved, because the isness of God suggests that God is worthy of thanks, adoration, and praise simply, solely because of who he is. And I'm maturing to the place in my life, beloved, where everything, every time I give God praise, it does not have to be a business transaction. I know because we were taught that when the praises go up, the blessings come down but there are some of us who's gotten to a place in our life that Lord if you don't do nothing else Lord if you don't open another door Lord if you do it's just something about who I know you to be and what you've done for me and what you've done for others that drives me to give you praise I wonder if there's anybody right now that can give God praise because once you begin to think you have no option but to thank because once you begin to think about what he's done once you begin to think about who he is you begin to thank him for everything that he's done and I love it beloved I love this because many of us are caught up in the business we want what God can give us and we don't really want who he is I'm preaching already that's all right but there's somebody in here you've gotten to a place in your life where you can say preacher I'm just grateful and thankful for who he is I'm grateful that he's sovereign I'm just thankful that he's divine I'm thankful that he's all powerful I'm thankful that he's omniscient I'm thankful that he's sovereign because even when I get in a bad situation because I, I know who he is I know how to act 
in a hard situation. I know how to act not because of my connections in my credentials but simply because I know who he is. And I like this because sometimes when you understand the isness of God, the isness of God even confuses your enemies. <laughs> because here it is, people think that you praise God on Sunday morning because you got a new house, because you praise it for a new husband, because you're praising because you want to hit the lotto but there's somebody here that says no I'm praising God simply because I know who he is I, I, I know what he's capable of I, I know what he can do I, I know how he can save I, I know how he can protect I know how he can cover I know how he can save I know how he can regulate can anybody in here this afternoon this evening give God praise simply because because you know who he is and watch this you know who he is not because somebody told you about him not because you necessarily read about it in an article not because you heard it for reform him but you've tried him for yourself anybody tried him and you know that he is a mind regulator you know that he is a heart fixer you know that he is a way out of no way okay let me go back to what my grandmother would say you know that he is a bridge over troubled waters you know that he is a doctor on your sick bed you know that he is a money when you need it you know that he is your connection when you have no resources anybody in here this evening can give God praise not for your next blessing but because you know who he is <laughs> Good God Almighty tonight. I'm grateful. I came all the way to Jackson, all the way from Jacksonville to tell y'all that's why we ought to be thankful. In this season, we ought to be thankful not just for a turkey. As a matter of fact, I heard that there are turkey shortages all over the country. So you might not even get one. We ought not be thankful for dressing and salad, but we ought to be thankful because when we look back over our life we simply know who God is I, I, I know y'all want me to move on and I promise you I'm moving but can somebody give God praise today not for the new house not for the new car or the new land but God says well even in the midst of a pandemic I want you to find a group of people who can give me praise simply because of who I am anybody caught up in his isness and you can say God I don't want a blessing right now. I need a miracle, but I don't. I, I just want to praise you for who you are. Yeah. It's something about his isness, Reverend Watson. It's, 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 it's something about his isness that ought to drive us to open up our mouth and say thank you. It's something. It, 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 it's something about his nature, about his sovereignty and his divinity. Here it is that we ought to be willing, ready to open up our mouths and tell the Lord thank you. And here it is. I like it because this whole issue of thankfulness does not just deal with what we say out of our mouth, but how we exhibit it through our actions. Lord have mercy I like this because um, it's one thing to say that I'm thankful but it's a whole nother thing to show that I'm thankful alright they sleep on this side it's one thing to say that you're thankful but it's a whole nother thing to show that you're thankful alright y'all say it's one thing to say that you're thankful but it's a whole nother thing to show that you're thankful and God says well I want you to check the temperature of the room in Mount Calvary doing the thanks living series he says because there may be some people who say that they are thankful he says but for some reason or another their actions doesn't show it but I wonder if there's about six people out there and I'll make number seven and we'll have our own praise party that can give God 15 seconds of praise because God I don't want to just tell you that I'm thanking but I've got to show you that it's something 
something about who you are. I've got to lift my hands. And God says, you're getting ready to confuse your enemy because they're trying to figure out why you're giving, you, giving him praise. She ain't got no new house. He ain't got no new car. He can't pay all the bills. But for some reason or another, they're still making it to the sanctuary and telling God thank you. Can I tell you, I'm thanking him because of who he is. I got to move. Here it is. Y'all going to make me preach too hard tonight. I feel it already. Here it is. Here it is. We, we, we've got to learn how to give God thanks, not only by word, but in deed. We've got to learn that, that the matter of thanksgiving has to deal not only with what we say, but how we are seen doing it in action. Lord have mercy, that's good. Not just by the lip service we give, but by the lifestyle we exemplify. And can I tell you that for some people, Thanksgiving is not just a holiday. But there are some of us that Thanksgiving is something that we do perpetually. Because we understand that God is not just worthy to be praised on a Sunday or a Wednesday night. But every day of my life, I am in a perpetual posture. I am in a perpetual posture of thanksgiving. When I wake up in the morning, it's thanksgiving. When I eat breakfast, it's thanksgiving. When I'm brushing my teeth, it's thanksgiving. When I'm in my shower, it's thanksgiving. When I'm at work, it's thanksgiving. And I like this because Luke chapter 17, my brothers and sisters, is a primary example of showing us what thankfulness, here it is, in word and in deed looks like. I love this, beloved. Luke chapter 17, this particular New Testament pericope is the perfect example to show us what thanksgiving looks like in word and in deed. I like it. The Bible says that Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem. Jerusalem, my brothers and sisters, is the spiritual epicenter of the day. But on his way to Jerusalem, somewhere in between Samaria and Galilee, scholars want to suggest that it is almost like a wilderness area. He's passing through somewhere between adjacent cities, Samaria and Galilee. And somewhere through the wilderness, there were ten men who were lepers who met him that were afar off. And I like this, beloved, because there are three things that I want to point out to you in the text that shows us how we can be thankful. And watch this. And how we can receive a miracle as a result of our thankfulness I like it because the Bible says that Jesus was on his way to Jerusalem he passes through Samaria and Galilee there met him ten men who were lepers who stood afar off they lifted up their voices and said Jesus master have mercy on us in other words what they did is they got his attention <laughs> I like this, beloved, because what this says to us is that these individuals were so desperate in their deliver. Watch this, that they did everything they could to capitalize on an opportunity to capture his attention. I like it because you, 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 you got to understand it now. One of the side effects of leprosy was that it diminished the vocal folds over time. So maybe if one of these lepers called his name, he probably wouldn't have heard him. <laughs> maybe if two of the lepers called his name, he wouldn't have heard him. Maybe if three or four or five lepers called his name, he probably wouldn't have heard him. But it took the collective effort of all ten lepers to say, Lord, we need you over here. 
And is that, can I suggest to somebody maybe in some churches in this country, I know it don't happen in Mount Calvary. That's why the spirit of the Lord never stops by. Because there are some churches in some places that never capitalizes on an opportunity to capture his attention. That's why some of us, every time the music is playing, we got to lift our hands. That's why we don't need no ushers trying to surround us and stop us. Because some of us, when we feel the presence of God, we've got to open up our mouth and say, Lord, if you don't stop by nowhere else, we want you to come to Mount Calvary. Lord, as a matter of fact, if you don't stop by nobody else row, I need you to stop by this row on the day. As a matter of fact, could you just check your row? Would somebody help me say, Jesus? Master, have mercy on me. Yes, that's how you get his attention. Because whenever you feel his presence, you've got to open up your mouth to get his attention. And I like this, beloved, because this brings us to our first point. I like it. Here it is. Because if you're going to tell the Lord thank you in word and in deed, this is the first thing you got to do. You've got to follow the Lord's guidance. Notice, y'all, here it is. Jesus is on his way to Jerusalem, somewhere between Samaria and Galilee. These ten lepers cry out, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. It is at the point of getting his attention that he gives them direction. And the reason why some of us don't have direction in our lives is because we ain't got his attention. Because it is at the point of getting his attention that he says, go show yourselves to the priests. Y'all, this, 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 this presents a problem because what Jesus does when he tells them this, he gives them a command that is contrary to their current condition. Notice they have leprosy leprosy was foul it was it was repugnant as a matter of fact the reason they're in the wilderness is because their condition is so severe and contagious that you can't be around the populace of people but in spite of this fact Jesus says because you got my attention I'm getting ready to give you some direction he says what I want you to do is to go show yourselves to the priests their situation was so desperate they got so tired of being in the condition that they was in that they ignored the fact that he gave them a command that was contrary to their current condition come here let me lay the revelation in your lap sometimes you've got to learn how to obey the Lord's voice even though you don't see his vision and is there anybody in here that can say I've gotten to a place in my life now that when the Lord speaks even though I don't understand it even though it don't makes full sense I've just learned how to step out on the word of God is there anybody in here that can give God praise because your situation and life didn't change or turn around until you stepped out on his vision, until you stepped out on his vision, even when you didn't understand his voice. All right, come and help me, Abraham. Help me preach this thing. He says, God tells him, he says, take your only son up to the mountain and I want you to offer this son as a sacrifice. Could you imagine at this point, this is Abraham's only son he's lamenting all the way up to the altar to sacrifice his son he don't understand the Lord's vision but Pastor Coffey he know he's heard the Lord's voice and so his son is saying daddy as many times as we've been on this mountain now I've seen you offer sacrifices before you got the knife you got the wood you got the stuff to make the altar, altar but where's the sacrifice and Abraham says son don't worry because the Lord will provide. Abraham gets up to the top of the mountain. I imagine with tears in his eyes, he wraps his son down on the altar and right before he get ready to slay his son, the Lord sends a ram in the bush. And I like this place, y'all, because God tells somebody that you need to learn how to obey his voice even though you don't understand the vision. And some of you, you've got your feet in quick saying. God said, I told you to start the business. I know you don't have the resources. It's all right. God says, I told you to launch 
launch out in the ministry I know you don't have the credentials all right it's all right because when you learn how to obey my voice even when you can't understand my vision it is at that place where I will make provision and can anybody give God praise because your whole life's testimony is that the Lord has been providing for me I haven't been the most qualified I haven't been the most buttoned up I haven't been the most credential but for some reason or another when I stepped out on his voice God made a provision I gotta go here it is Got to follow the Lord's guidance. A part of doing that is being able to obey his voice even when you don't understand his vision. Because watch the miracle, y'all. Watch this. The Bible says, as they went, Lord have mercy, hold your boy right here. They were cleansed. Reverend Coffee, here it is. They got the miracle but never made it to the destination. He says, go to the priest's. They received the healing, but they never made it to the priest. Come here, come here. Let me lay the revelation in your lap. God says, well, I need you to let somebody know that the miracle that they're looking for is not necessarily in the destination, but it's following my direction. <laughs> And can I tell somebody, you're trying to get to the destination. You're trying to wait till it's already done. You're trying to wait till the way has already been made. But God says, no, I don't need you to wait till you get to the destination. But God says, it's something about you having faith in my direction that you can receive the miracle. Is there anybody in here that can give God praise? Because when you were lost in your own wilderness, when you were going on your own way, it didn't have all the answers when you launched out into the deep and didn't understand it it was in that place that the Lord gave you a miracle here it is I'm done here it is you got to follow the Lord's guidance here it is if you're gonna be thankful in word and in deed here it is not only must you follow the Lord's guidance you've got to be faithful to give the Lord glory the Bible says these ten men are on their way back to their respective city. We don't know who's from where. The Bible says he was somewhere in between Samaria and Galilee. So we are left to believe that they, these ten lepers belong to either city. But here it is. They were on their way back. And they noticed that something had changed in them. They noticed that they had been healed of their infirmity. Because they followed his direction they noticed that they had been cleansed. But I like this, and y'all watch this. I'm, I teach in the school system, but I've never been good at math. And, but, I, but, but, but I do know, Brim Coffee, that, that 10 is greater than 1. <laughs> 10 got healed. But it was something about the 1. And I can imagine in my mind that these other 10 men went back into their respective cities. They said, man, we got families. I got a home. I got a life. I got a, I'm going back home. And here it is. I like it because one says, here it is. I've got to go back to give the Lord glory. Watch how he does it. The Bible says that he returned to give the Lord glory. He fell down on his face at his feet. Now, the first thing you do, you got to give the Lord glory by pursuing his presence. Notice that they were headed to the priest. The Bible never says that Jesus stops and take a break at the place he healed them. So Jesus is still on his way to Jerusalem while the ten is on their way to the priest. But when this one man gets healed, he says, I don't care how far back I got to go to find this Jesus, but I've got to get in his presence and tell him thank you. Anybody in here grateful for the presence of God? And you've got to give him glory by being in his presence. He gave him glory by pursuing his presence. He also gave him glory, here it is, by changing his posture. The Bible says when he saw Jesus, he fell down on his face at his feet. In other words, it wasn't just enough to get in his presence, but when he got in his presence, he had to change his posture. 
And so it was one thing to say, Lord, I thank you. But it was another thing that when I'm in his presence, I've got to change my posture. God saved me from a church of arrogant, erudite people that when they give it come into the house, Lord, the Lord's house, they want to posture themselves as if they are bosses and kings in the Lord's church. But is there anybody in here that can say the Lord's been too good to me? And so when I come into thy Lord's house, I've got to learn and I've learned how to change my posture. And I know there's some people that always wants to know why she always got to shout. There's some people that always wants to know why you got to make all that noise. But there's a few of us in here that can say, I'm getting ready. I feel something pushing me now to tell the Lord thank you you don't know what he's done for me you don't know how he saved my soul you don't know how he changed my life and so every time I come into the house of the Lord you can sit down if you want you can play around on your phone if you want you can pity pat your hands if you want but when I think about what the Lord has done for me I've got to change my posture I gotta change it in his presence that's why I can't leave the same way I came in I gotta lift my hands I've gotta put my hands together I've gotta put my feet on the floor so when you see me giving God praise don't be dismayed I'm just telling the Lord thank you Good evening now, Mount Calvary. I got to get out of y'all way. But if you're going to tell the Lord, thank you. In word and in deed. You got to follow the Lord's guidance. You got to be faithful to give the Lord glory. But lastly, our gratitude leads to growth. When this one man comes back to Jesus, the Lord asks him, where the other nine at? He says, Lord, I'm not sure and he says the only person to return is this foreigner who was a Samaritan he says arise go your way your faith has made you well you can't shout like I shout because you ain't do the homework like I did in another translation it reads arise go your way your faith has made you whole and I had to ask the text some questions Lord if you've already healed the man why would you call him whole if you've already healed him and God say will because everybody that appears to be healed is not always whole. Can I tell somebody that God wants to make you whole? Is there anybody here? You don't want a new house. You don't want a new car. You don't want materialistic things. But Lord, whatever you do, make me whole and make me whole whole in my mind whole in my spirit whole in my family and I wonder if anybody can give God a whole praise cause there anybody that can give him praise with your whole heart for every mountain you brought me over for every valley you seen me through I'll sing hallelujah open up your mouth and give God praise because of your whole blessing and tell, tell somebody, said neighbor, you see.
see me now. You see my story. But you see my glory. But you don't know my story. That's why I got to tell them thank you. That's why I got to lift my hands. That's why I got to get excited. Because of what he done. And because of who he is. Can anybody give God praise for who he is? I'm out of your way. I got to go back home now. But can I tell somebody, if you ain't happy yet, why you ought to be thankful? Because over 2,000 years ago guess what he did he bled he bled he suffered and he died I said didn't he die they put nails they put it in his hands nails they put it in his feet and he dropped his head in the locks of his shoulder I'm going to tell the story on tonight and he died but can I tell you why I'm thankful because early Early, early Sunday morning, he got up with all power in his hands, and I can feel his power moving in my life. I can feel his power moving in my heart. Ain't he all right? I said, ain't the Lord all right? Won't he make a way? Won't he bring you out? Won't he open the door? Won't he heal your body? Won't he save your soul? Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Say yes. Ain't he all right? Ain't he all right? Come on, open up your mouth and give God thanks for every way he's made, for how he's kept you, for how he saved you. Say, ah! Say, yes! Ah! Yeah! I'm trying to let y'all go, but this thing done caught me on tonight. I'm so grateful. I got to tell my testimony. Pastor Coffee, I was home just last week, and my little sister moved in with me. I was laying in the bed, and before I knew it, I heard gunshots right by my window. I got up and I start to check the house. I went around to my sister's room to make sure everything was okay. And I got so worried. I was so upset that people could be so responsible. But God says, hold up. He says, don't get mad. But you need to give me praise. I said, God praise you for what? He says, look around your house. He says, no bullets came through. He says, no window was shattered. He says, you all right. And your sister all right. Can anybody give God praise? Because he's a keeper. He's a way maker. Shout yeah. Yeah. Yeah.
Won't he do it? Won't he do it? And if you can declare and know that he will do it, then you ought to tell him what? Thank you for every mountain he's brought you over. Every valley he brought you through. And I'm glad you recognize that God said, look at what I did for you. Before you complain, I've taken care of you and your little sister. That's enough to give God praise for right there. I'm waiting on y'all. I'm waiting on y'all. tells us that when he came back, the Lord said, where are the other nine? Won't there ten? And while he could not give an account for the other nine, he made it clear why he had come back. To tell God, thank you. The Reverend touched on the miracle. I, I can tell you in seminary now by the way he's preaching. The Bible says that not only was healed, he was made whole. And to put it in layman terms, what happened was, Dick Robinson, he got a two for one. Not only did he heal his body, made him whole. And that's what all of us ought to want, to be made whole. And a good place to start to work on that is to create an attitude of gratitude. This preacher has preached out of his soul tonight. Simple message, nothing deep. When's the last time you told God, thank you? What a powerful presentation. Maybe there's someone listening in tonight. You recognize God has been good to you. And you've shortchanged him in your praise and in your acknowledgement. Maybe you're on the outside looking in. You have not accepted him as Lord and Savior. Tonight will be a mighty good time to show your gratitude for him keeping you. Someone here tonight may be in this sanctuary. You're in church, but the church is really not in you. You show up and you go through the ceremonies. You, you know how to act churchy, but but Jesus Christ is not the centerpiece of your being. You can fix that tonight. Because if you want to say thank you, you want to mean it when you say it. And when you accept him as Lord and Savior, your whole perspective will change because you'll recognize the first thing he's done for you, he saved your soul from a burning hell. All of this is going to pass away, but, but when you accept him as Christ, you, you've secured not life insurance, but you've secured eternal life insurance. It only comes from having a right relationship with him. So there are two things. If you're not saved, you can come tonight. He's waiting. But secondly, the preacher put his foot on it. 
If you know God's been good to you, if you know he's made ways, he's opened doors, he's he brought you out of situations that on your own would have taken you out, but God grabbed you out of the muck and the mire. And although you know you didn't do it for yourself, you've been slack in showing your gratitude. I pray that you'll make a commitment tonight to tell God, forgive me for my lack of acknowledgement. And I want to tell you tonight, God, I thank you for all you've done for me. Doors of the church are now open. Thank you, Lord. The doors are open if you're listening in. Jesus is waiting. He, he knows your past. He wants to become a part of your future. But it starts with you letting him in. For all of us who are here tonight, we know that we've been blood bought if you're saved. And that alone ought to cause us to have an attitude of gratitude for all that God has done for us. But if he's not Lord and Savior, then you ought to thank him tonight for another chance. And take advantage, as the preacher said, of the opportunity of God's guidance to accept him as Lord and Savior. Oh, thank, thank you. Say thank you because you mouthpiece in the person and personality of Pastor William Robinson. Thank you for allowing him to remind us that we truly ought to be a people who are thankful because truth be told you brought all of us from a mighty mighty long way and not because of our goodness but because of your grace and your mercy and your kindness toward us. And for that, we say thank you. Many of us found ourselves in places where we weren't sure we were going to recover, but because you're a God that can do anything but fail, here we are. We say thank you. Many of you are still dealing with the, with the after effects of bad relationships, 
but daily we're getting stronger because we keep our eyes focused on you. We say thank you. There are those during this season of COVID who's, who've lost loved ones, friends, co-workers, but you've kept us. And the fact that we are still here causes us to say, Lord, we thank you. A part of our purpose of still being here, God, is to give you glory, honor, and praise. Let us never be ashamed. Let us follow the example of that one who came back to tell you much obliged. We thank you for every blessing, both great and small. And we pray that this spirit of gratitude will carry far beyond the month of November. But as the choir would say in the song, every day ought to be a day of thanksgiving. We thank you, God, for showing up in this place tonight. Thank you for your spirit. Thank you for those who came ready to receive. Thank you for those who brought praises on their lips and worship on their hearts. And God, as we recognize that in this season of Thanksgiving, if, if we don't get a turkey, we can praise God because we recognize that you are everything that we need. We close this prayer by saying, God, meet every need according to your riches and glory. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your mercy. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for Jesus who died in our place. Thank you for the Holy Spirit that will lead God and direct us into all truth. And we ask that you continue to guide our mind, control our thoughts, and all that we say and do. And we speak life and prosperity over this young preacher as he embarks on the new assignment as pastor. Go with him. Walk before him, God. We pray that he'll continue to let his light shine. That he'll never be ashamed to let the world know for God he lives and for God he'll die. Bless us now, we pray to come down off this mountain and depart this place. Let your hand be upon us. Keep us safe from all hurt, harm, and danger. We thank you again for all that has taken place. And now may his grace, his love, sweet communion, his Holy Spirit, rest, rule, and abide with these thy people. Now henceforth and for evermore. Because we want to leave on a high note. We want to simply leave saying, thank you, Lord. Oh, everybody say, thank you, Lord. Thank God bless you. Have a good evening.
his name, call him. Lord. Lord. God bless you. Have a good night.